COVID cases are on the rise in 33 states. But Education Secretary Betsy DeVos says she's ready to ring the school bell in September. And she was asked about this on CNN, how she's making sure it'll be safe for students and teachers. Take a look at her response. Do you have a plan but for, the, for the, what it, students the and plan what schools it, should do? So, Schools should do what's right on the ground at that time for their students and for their situation. I am urging all schools to be re to open and to be providing their students a full-time education. We all acknowledge that that could and may well look different in a certain area that has a flare-up of the virus. So, Sonny, a lot of us are going to be helping to make this decision. You for your, your daughter and Joy for her grandson and me for my great-granddaughter. You know, where are you at with all of this? It, does it feel like you're ready to just get your daughter right into school? Well, no, especially when you hear from someone like Betsy DeVos that there really is no federal plan in place. I mean, you just have to look at the numbers. I think Florida over the weekend hit um, an all-time high in, in terms of numbers. You know, we see at least 33 states seeing higher rates of new cases compared to the previous week. Um, Saturday, Florida actually had 15,299 new cases, the highest number of new cases in a single day by any state since this pandemic began. How can a mother in Florida feel comfortable uh, putting her, her daughter or her son um, in, in, a, in a class it just doesn't make sense because while we know yeah. that children certainly have a, a less um, chance of getting the virus, they can still get the virus. Children have died from the virus and then they can bring it home to their parents, to their grandparents. We know that there are multi-generational households all over our country, including in my own. So am I comfortable sending my daughter um, to, to school in the fall without any real federal plan in place? I, I, I'm just not. I'm not. We, we haven't handled this pandemic right. um, federally in the way that we, we should have. And it's just not safe for, for our children and it's just not safe for the country. Right. So, Megan, we're not seeming to get any real guidance from the education secretary. So what do you think a good idea for a plan could be? Well, first and foremost, on that point, Betsy DeVos needs major media training if she's going to have a job like this in the administration during a pandemic. I don't know if I've ever seen someone at that level be worse in interviews. And you're laughing, Joy, but it's quite serious. I mean, we're talking about life and death situation of children going back to school. I mean, I was horrified when I saw it yesterday because I am someone who is a proponent of children going back to school. There's a really interesting article by Biana Goladriga on CNN.com today where she's talking about how she did reporting, how this is just unsustainable for a lot of working families, for single moms, for parents that work, and they're having to make these hard decisions between cutting their hours, making up the money that they've already lost from the pandemic, and having child care and having their kids go to school. We've also seen pediatricians, doctors, experts talk about the regression of children in this country, both educationally, emotionally, mentally, socially, and I worry about having a complete lost year for this generation. And I think we have to have a plan, and I'm really disappointed and quite frankly disgusted that five plus months in there is just no plan like apparently if you're a working single mom with four kids you're screwed and that is not acceptable mm -hmm. in the United States of America today and I think everyone from Betsy DeVos on down Republicans Democrats as far as I'm concerned vote everybody out on both sides from the ground up because I'm so sick of mm -hmm. our paying taxpayer dollars to come up with absolute jack five months in for the children of America. One would think it would have been a smart idea to encourage people to wear the masks since those are ways that we can guarantee that a whole lot of people are not going to get sick. But nobody decided that this was as important as it should be. Now, Joy, you're a former teacher. How do you feel about uh, how this can impact teachers along with the kids? Yeah. What's funny, Megan, is that media training is the least of her problems. That's what made me laugh. But, but it's about communication. The, uh, Fam I know, she sucks. So according to the Kaiser <laughs> Family <laughs> Foundation, 1.5 million teachers are at greater risk of serious yeah. illness 
if infected by the coronavirus. One in four teachers. Yeah. That's a lot. You know what really is really, really ma making me uh, a music beat today is this idea that uh, the Republican Party cares about education. They've been spending the last few decades defunding education. Uh, and they think that we're going to believe this baloney that they're throwing at us now that they care about our children? Give me a break. Donald Trump only cares about getting reelected. Full stop. And we know from John Bolton and other sources right on the front lines with him that that is his ultimate goal. That's all he cares about. Please. Well, I don't think it's fair to say Republicans don't care, don't care about children. I mean, I think that's that's very aggressive and incendiary. Education. But I think when you're ta education, whatever. I said but education. I talking, Excuse me. Well, the okay. idea that Republicans don't care about education. I mean, what about teachers' unions? One of the ideas that I've heard is teachers who are immune compromised or above a certain age should maybe be doing their classes via Zoom or via satellite, and then have a proctor who is healthy and does feel comfortable social distancing in stores. One of the things that uh, someone like Governor DeSantis says. If we can have people at Walmart, if we can have people at theme parks, we should be able to figure out getting kids social distancing in schools. And there feels like there's a moving goalpost of priorities. But to sit here and say that Republicans don't care about education or children is it, just, it's just well, ridiculous. Well, then why do they keep defunding it? Why do they keep defunding education? Every time I turn around, it's less money. I was a teacher. I know what I'm talking about, okay, Megan? I it's was not a teacher, I'm not a teacher, but the, again, I think that this is, I think what's exhausting is coming on the show every day and being told that Republicans don't care about anything. We just want people to die, we want children not to be educated, nothing matters. This is a crisis in this country right now. I have friends who have been calling me absolutely panicked about their kids not being able to go back to work and go back to school in September, and we all have to collectively come together and stop coming into this show every Monday after a break and saying, oh, it's Republicans' fault. It's not. This is America's problem. And yes, there's a lot of blame to be placed at Trump's feet, but we can all collectively take blame right now for everyone who's in office on the left I and the right. I wish that Hillary Clinton. I'm sorry, but I wish that Hillary Clinton. We'll be right back. Virginia, you'd not find yourself in Virginia.